Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be looking at Supernova. That was Betelgeuse exploding very close to our planet Earth in a, and obviously in our solar system. And this would probably basically cause mass extinction on the entire planet Earth and everyone would be dead. But in today's video we're going to discover if in the next few thousands or maybe even million years we're in any danger of any supernova killing all life on Earth. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So, in reality, Betelgeuse is actually one of the few stars that might go supernova in the next million years or so, and it's relatively close to us, so we might be able to see it if we're still around. But here's the thing though, it's actually quite far away, it's, it's about 600 light years away from us, so if this is our solar system, we would have to place Betelgeuse really, really, really far away. So let's place it at an actual distance of... 600 light years away somewhere in the constellation of orion so right around here now this is really far away i'm going to make it go supernova just so you can see what it looks like from earth and we're going to zoom in back to our planet and we're going to just observe uh how all of this progresses and we might actually have to wait a few years before we can see anything so um let's actually disable the labels here just so we can actually just see the supernova itself now so imagine Betelgeuse went supernova and it will take 600 years for the light from that supernova to reach our planet and then 600 years later we might experience something that's going to be visually stunning but the thing is it's so far away that it's very unlikely to affect us at all so today we're going to be talking about a new paper that was published in 2017 in the Astrophysical Journal that basically um, did a bit of research on various supernova in the past and it also compared some of the effects that Earth has received in those, um, during those periods and uh, they've established a really interesting pattern. So whenever a supernova happens within about uh, 200 or so light years away from us, but I guess farther away than 50 light years, there's usually some sort of a climatic change on our planet. Now, as you can see, we are still are barely even seeing that supernova. It's still very, very dim. And this is after like 100 years. So I'm going to maybe accelerate a little bit more just so we can start seeing it better. The thing about supernova, though, is that they're relatively rare and they only occur in very gigantic stars, like, for example, Betelgeuse. And so we're going to take a look at um, whether there are actually any stars within about 50 light years away from us that might go supernova, because those are the stars we should be worried about. If there aren't any stars in that vicinity, we're going to be okay for the next few billion years, because it's very unlikely that any of the... Um, stars in our neighborhood will actually be going supernova. So anyway, back to the paper. In that paper, they've discovered that about 2.6 million years ago, there was a very unusual cooling effect, which would be kind of similar to the um, Ice Age in a sense, mini miniature Ice Age. This particular period um, seems to have a lot of really interesting effects happening on our planet, including increase in uh, forest fires, increase in certain radioactive particles that were discovered on the surface of our planet and essentially um, unusual weather patterns that cool down the earth and it's uh, suggested by the scientists that wrote this paper that these effects were actually caused by a supernova a supernova that occurred about 2.6 million years ago approximately 150 light years away from us so these uh, various cosmic rays and various types of radiation that came from that supernova and uh, there is the Betelgeuse supernova that you can kind of slowly see appearing. Um, these effects may have contributed to changes in atmosphere um, and affected the habitats in Africa, may have even burned down the forests in Africa, causing a majority of Africa to turn into a desert. And this is usually due to increasing ionization from the highly charged particles from the supernova that may have increased um, the frequency of lightning and various wildfires. So it's not from the supernova itself, it's just from the sudden increase in particles. 
anyway, and so their discovery is that, well, it seems that um, a lot of these supernova that occur in the vicinity of about 50 to about 200 light years away from us may have actually caused various cl climatic changes, specifically the cooling effect. So maybe, just maybe, the ice age that we've experienced was actually caused by a nearby supernova, which would actually be a pretty cool explanation because that just means that uh, ice ages were essentially a cosmologically caused phenomenon. Anyway, so there's the Betelgeuse supernova. It sort of looks like a very large star. It's already been several thousand years, so this is much bigger than it used to be, but it's not going to be particularly dangerous to us. So let's instead take a look at another simulation that shows us the nearest stars to us, and we're going to see if any of these stars, specifically these 400 stars, are large enough or unstable enough for them to actually go supernova within about a distance of, let's see how far away this is, a distance of about 54 to 57 light years away from us. So this is all of our neighbors within a distance of about 50 to 60 light years. And let's find out if any of them are either unstable giants that might go supernova within the, ne the next few million years, or potentially binary white dwarfs that might go super, uh, type 1a supernova from acquiring too much mass and from getting to Chandra's Arca limit. This is essentially all of the stars that are close to us. Very realistic represented. Some of them are actually stars I've never even heard of. Very new discoveries. Anyway, we're going to go into chart here. And what we're going to do is essentially sort them out by mass. We're going to start by sorting them out by mass. Zoom into one of the most massive ones. And this is a star by the name the Hui, and uh, it's a very interesting name, very unusual name, but it's a star that's actually relatively stable, relatively young, and its uh, current age here is only about two, 29 million years. It is massive, but it's not particularly unstable. The other two stars, 29 Gam Vir is um, kind of young, and this one here is about the same age as our sun, so they still have quite a long time to go, and uh, everything else here seems to be a relatively stable uh, blue or white star. There's this star that might cause a little bit of a problem, but actually all of them are sun-like. So none of these stars are in their giant um, form. As a matter of fact, none of these stars are nowhere near the end of their life. They still have billions of years in them, and they'll still live for a very long time. Even this large one called Mu Are um, is actually only about 23 million years old. So we're kind of seem to be pretty safe from any major supernova. Now, what about white dwarfs? So let's see if we can find some white dwarfs that might uh, be potentially dangerous to us. And all of the white dwarfs are right here. I basically just sorted this out by radius. So we have quite a few of them. There's like nine. One of them is um, one of them is called Van Manen star. It's a pretty famous star. And another one is obviously Series B, the closest white dwarf to us. And um, actually, none of these stars have um, anything that would ca cause them to go supernova anytime soon. Series B does have a companion, but its mass is actually small enough for it to survive for a long time, and its companion is far enough that Series B does not actually acquire any mass from, from it. And all of the other stars here are actually a lot less massive than Series B. So the closest star to us that might, the closest white dwarf to us that might potentially go supernova is Series B, but even this star is going to be very stable for a very, very long time, and we're talking about like billions of years here. Unless something catastrophic happens and somehow another star collides with it. So, what this tells us is that there's really nothing to worry about in terms of supernova going off anytime soon, at least in the next billion years or so. Even if as we move across the galactic skies and as we change position in, the, in our galaxy and encounter new stars, uh, so far none of the ones close to us, none of the ones in the near vicinity seem to be dangerous. 
the most dangerous one would be this Series B. It's only about six light years away from us, and it's a white dwarf that may go supernova if it acquires certain mass, but it doesn't have any means of acquiring this mass. If it gets to the Chandra Zachary limit, which is, I think it's right here, but for some reason it's actually broken, it doesn't always react to this. So anyway, if, if it acquires the uh, Chandra Zachary limit of about 1.4-ish masses of the sun, it will then go supernova. In this case, it will definitely go supernova. The entire star will actually explode and will witness a beautiful um, creation in our skies that will probably then kill everything on our planet because Sirius B is pretty close to us. But with the exception of Sirius B, nothing else is at even close to exploding. And even Sirius B will not explode for sure. Almost for sure. And anyway, so hopefully now you know that we're actually pretty safe from any supernova going off anytime soon and killing all of us. In this game, I was able to make uh, Series B go supernova, but it's only a game. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you learned something from this, from this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching science videos and wants to learn through video games and potentially support this channel on Patreon as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, something interesting, something you didn't know. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.